Today we're going to be talking about something really exciting. How do you drive e-commerce sales using the different digital channels that exist? And my name is Vikas and you're watching Digital Bites. Don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the bell icon right here. The first thing to keep in mind is the entire website and user experience that users are going to have. And if you have an app, then definitely the app experience as well. I think the experience that a user has right from the time they land onto the product page or the category page, all the way down to them adding it to the cart, checking out, the kind of information that exists not just about the product, but also about shipping, about the cost, uh, is there an additional charge for cash and delivery? All those elements actually make a big difference when it comes to the user actually deciding whether to purchase or not and whether their PIN code is serviced. Uh, sometimes there are sizing and other elements that are taken into account as well. So I think right from the product page all the way to the checkout, it's very important to experience it yourself, especially on a mobile device because that's where you're probably going to get a lot of your sales from. So it's very important to actually look at that experience and see how can you enhance it. Can you make it better? Can you make your call to actions and the buttons more prominent? There's so many elements that you can really look at and maybe we'll have a separate session on that on digital bytes, but I think the experience that is there is really, really important. The second thing to keep in mind is the full funnel approach. And we have a video right here, uh, which you can see on the full funnel approach, is about how do you really build a brand before you can actually take them through that journey and make them purchase your product. I think many a times, especially the new e-commerce brands forget that you need people to believe in you and believe in your brand and trust your brand. And that's not something that's going to come by quickly. That's going to come by with you know, consistent uh, sort of visibility, uh, with consistent social proof and customers actually talking about how they've had a great experience. So that entire journey of building that brand and awareness is also very important. And that's something to keep in mind as you kind of look at uh, building visibility for your brand. The third point to, to look at is actually how do you look at customized communication for each kind of a product category or customer category, right? So the audiences are different and so are your categories of products. And we have some great examples and, and we'll probably link one which is from uh, bevacoof.com which is one of our e-commerce clients and you can check them out right here. Uh, but what we really did and maybe an example will probably help here is the fact that we segmented audiences and then really made creative assets that was catering to that specific audience. For example, when Game of Thrones was coming out for their final season and Beaverkoof actually had a whole bunch of apparel that was catering to their audience, what we did was to segment that audience that was actually watching that. People who had hot stuff, people who were watching that show, people who were engaging with that show and saw how we can create communication and creative assets based on that, right? From the music, the what we were saying, the products themselves were all linked to that sort of category as well. Uh, and another example is again with, with the same uh, with the same brand was we actually brought their t-shirts and apparel to life. We actually brought that entire character that they show in their t-shirts and apparel actually to life by animating them through videos. And that again is something that really worked well across Instagram and YouTube and helped the uh, audience really engage with those products as well. So I think the way you communicate a product and how you communicate it is really, really important. And today, because you can segment audiences really, really finitely, it makes sense to actually figure out what are the kind of different audience sets you're going after. Are you going after people who are travelers? Are you going after people who are foodies? Are you going after people who are into fashion or beauty? You can actually segment them a bit finer in finer ways. And that's really how you should also build your creative and communication strategy as well. Next, we're going to look at, you know, how do you use different channels? So let's, for example, take Facebook for as the first channel, right? I think there are many categories today that Facebook is much better at driving results for. For example, apparel, for example, fashion, for example, anything that's an impulse purchase. Facebook is a great way to kind of drive that, that purchase. Even travel, for example, right? So I think there's a you need to also understand which channel is going to work better for you and, and then decide uh, you know how much to all allocate resources between the different channels that are there. If it's an impulse purchase, then maybe Facebook is a great way to begin that journey. Maybe if it's something that people are often searching for, that could uh, Google could be a great way to start that journey. So let's look at what can Facebook do for us. The first thing which we already discussed is the full funnel approach. How do you start building an audience by, by showing them video communication, by showing them your communication about your brand, about who you are, what sets you apart as a brand. And that's definitely one way of building that audience out because what we understand even from our past experiences there's of course the whole universe of the Facebook ecosystem, which is uh, almost you know, 300 million Indians today. Uh, but as you filter them down to you know geographies where you where you sell, 
or filter them down by interest and attributes that, that you have, you start creating uh, audiences that relate to you and your brand and, and audiences that have visited your website, audiences that are similar to people who bought from you in the past. And those audiences or lookalike audiences and custom audiences are a great way to filter that audience because you cannot go after the entire 300 million. You need to find a way to filter them down to smaller audiences that engage with you or are lookalikes of people who bought from you or visited your site before. So the entire audience segmentation is definitely very important, not just on Facebook, even on Google as well, because that's really how helps you filter on what really works. And what we've also seen is the fact that uh, the images and the product feed that exists is, is very important across any other channels that you're going to go after. Uh, so the kind of images, are they enticing? Do they actually give the information that's there? Uh, Facebook, of course, gives you the price information right up front. But are you adding more value to it? Are you talking about the color? Are you talking about the attributes? Is it, uh, you know, is it an organic product? Are you making sure the attributes that are going to lead to the decision to purchase are actually clear across both the image as well as the description that actually exists there? The other way to use Facebook is actually segmenting audiences based on what they've done. For example, has someone spent more than three minutes on your website? For example, has someone come to your website three times in the last 30 days? For example, has someone come just yesterday to your website, right? So there are different ways you can use that audience depending on what they've done or what they've not done. Have they visited a product page but not purchased, right? So you need to structure your campaign such that, of course, you're going after newer audiences all the time, but you're also engaging with audiences that have come to your website or not purchased or who have come to your app and have been using your app but not purchased anything in the last 60 days or the last 90 days. And those are the smarter ways of actually using your audience and of course customizing your communication to those audiences as well to be able to actually drive results as well. And the product catalog sales on Facebook uh, or the shopping ads on Google are the most effective ways of driving that. But you may not be able to do that from day one, which is why you may need to have different kinds of ads uh, which actually drive that in the beginning, which could be ads that go directly to the website, uh, to the category pages, and then over a period of time move to a point where most of your sales are coming from shopping ads or catalog ads as well. We also have a great video on how do you drive ROI from Facebook. You can check it out right here. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next segment, right? So if you look at Google, for example, what can you do on that platform? And Google is, of course, a very powerful platform when it comes to search and shopping as well. The first thing we would look at from the Google angle is definitely the product feed because the title of the product, the description, the image are very, very critical factors for Google to pick up and show you in the right places. Uh, so depending on what you put in your titles, whether you're saying you're an organic t-shirt, if you're saying, uh, you know, you're selling, uh, you may be selling a packaged food product, maybe you're selling a chutney, whatever that product is that you're selling, the title and the description and the image are very, very critical. And there are, of course, many best case practices around that that you can find online to do. The next thing we would look at is the fact that how do you structure your campaigns on Google? Most of your sales, as I was mentioning earlier, needs to be driven by the shopping ads, uh, which is linked to your product feed. Uh, but to get to that point, maybe you need to structure it a bit better as well. You can have definitely search ads that run for the broader category. So let's say you're selling apparel. You can have definitely a search ad targeting people who are looking for buying t-shirts online, right? which is a very, very broad category. And as you go deeper, you should have shopping ads that take over most of the other sales. So someone looking for, let's say, a blue colored polo t-shirt, uh, medium size that should be something that a shopping ad should trigger for that and that's really how you would structure those campaigns and if you want to still figure out what kind of structure to put to your shopping ads you could definitely also use dynamic search ads which could take care of a, a, a different set of search queries and that could also help you expand the kind of sales you kind of get from there and and typically if you look at search dynamic search and shopping and you do a combination of these three is when you're going to start getting results from the Google campaign as well. And Google has something amazing called smart shopping campaigns, which uh, requires you to have a certain number of sales already in your Google account. And once you hit that, the smart shopping campaigns work really, really well. And, and that's really what drives results in the long run for many of our e-commerce clients. The other thing to keep in mind is the fact that you also need to use uh, the high, medium, low priority in the shopping campaigns because the high priority is what you would give to products or categories that are really important for you. Products that you, you know you're gonna make more money on, products that you know are selling really well, products you know are different compared to all your other competitors. And of course, medium and low uh, would be lower than that. And, and the high, medium, low prioritization of shopping campaigns is a very important part of how 
the, the entire algorithm actually works. And we would actually recommend having a separate product set for each of your different categories. So let's say you're selling t-shirts, you're also selling jeans, you're also selling shoes. You don't want to combine these three in a single product set because it actually confuses the algorithm and, and they don't know what to show your products going for. So we would actually segment those in separate product sets and separate campaigns so that it actually performs really, really well. The sixth point we would look at today is with regards to how do you bid for this. Typically, what matters from the e-commerce angle is return on ad spend or ROAS as we know it. Because for every 100 rupees I spend, for example, I need to make sure I get 300 rupees or 400 rupees on some categories between 500 rupees. That means I need to have a 5x return on whatever I invest. And that's really important from an e-commerce angle. It's not so much about the cost per sale on the number of customers. As long as you're getting high value customers to come to your site, the ROAS is always going to be high. And today there are bidding mechanisms that allow you to do that. Uh, Google, for example, has a target ROAS that you can have as long as you have a certain number of sales already in the, in the account. Uh, and Facebook is also having a target cost and a bid cost mechanism that helps you kind of control that ROAS to a large extent. So the entire mechanism of driving ROAS is how you should bid for your campaigns as well. Of course, you can start with cost per click and you know, maximize conversions, but eventually you need to a point where you have a target ROAS and driving results towards that. The last point we're going to look at today is the fact that you also need campaigns that will not only retain your customers, but also bring back customers who have not bought from you in a long time. Uh, especially if you have an app-based uh, e-commerce company, it's very important to kind of bring back users who have installed the app and bought from you in the past, but not really purchased anything in the last 60 days or 90 days. And th those are audiences who already trust you, audiences who bought from you and experienced your product. And that's a great way to kind of structure your campaign so that you not just have dynamic remarketing for people who visited in the last few days, but also remarketing campaigns for older audiences that can be brought back and sort of retained over a period of time. And that retention and sort of stickiness of your old customers is also very important because those customers are going to be much more affordable to acquire because you've already acquired them in the past as well. You could also run email or campaigns to these audiences to bring them back as well. But campaigns to keep bringing back old customers is a very important aspect to keep in mind as well. That's all we have for you today. I think there's a lot more that we can do on the e-commerce and shopping side. In fact, YouTube is an exciting channel to use for e-commerce as well and we will have a separate session on that. But thanks for watching this session of Digital Bytes. Please do leave your comments uh, on which learning that you found really useful. Uh, please do like and also subscribe to our channel if you already have it done. It's right here. I'm going to wait for a second for you to do it right here. Uh, do it and follow us and we'll see you back again really soon. Hey guys! We're the team behind Digital Bytes. We hope you found these videos informative. If you have any suggestions or topics that you want us to cover, please comment below. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you!